We are now over at Zollicoffer Park. This is the site where the tree was at that his body was taken to uh, during the battle uh, after he was struck. Uh, and of course the tree, if you remember from earlier in the video, there is a big section of the tree that is currently at the museum and the Welcome Center, but currently here, uh, this is also the site of the Confederate mass grave that we're going to go look at here in just a few moments as well. This site here is where the mass grave is. Uh, you can see the mound here as well as the stone placed on top. That gives you some information about it. Uh, of course, uh, this is over 100 people that were buried according to this plaque. And, uh, you know, soldiers from Tennessee Mississippi and Alabama who were all killed during the Battle of Mills Creek. Here's a list of names of some of the casualties from the Battle of Mill Springs. Some of the Confederate troops that were identified are buried here. Uh, this cemetery is just beyond where the mass grave was where a significant number of Confederate soldiers were buried in a mass grave, but uh, a lot of others lie right here underneath these stones. This area here was the scene of some of the heaviest fighting of the Battle of Mill Springs. You would not know it unless a lot of plaques and things were here. I mean, this looks like just a typical park, a typical grassy area, but you can see some of the, the fence row, the remaining of the fence here. Uh, as well as just how close in proximity it is to where a lot of the Confederate dead were buried back over there just past the monument and uh, very nice very somber area and just an interesting side note while we were walking across over to this area off in the distance was a gunshot and I'm sure this being a very rural area that there are a lot of folks with firearms that will be doing target practice or just whatever but just quite interesting to see and to be in this place and then here off in the distance something like that
reconstructed fence uh, kind of depicting the location of the fence during the battle with uh, just imagine one side filled with Union soldiers and the other side filled with Confederate soldiers. So it is currently starting to rain so we're going to be getting back in the car and heading down to the next part of this journey. Very interesting here, the plaque, everything. It talks a lot about the history of this area, the graves. It's just kind of a somber thing. And very unique, very interesting. So now, let's try to get it somewhere dry. We are now on top of what is known as Last Stand Hill. You can see a couple of cannons out here uh, that kind of depict the battle in this area. Uh, and this is where the uh, Confederates, basically when they tried to retreat, uh, this artillery area is kind of an overlook from the area where we were at before, where the Confederates were trying to push through this direction to get away from the Union Army uh, to fall back to their fortifications. And uh, you can see behind me how that the top of this hill would be a good vantage point. Uh, but now we're on to the next stop. At one time here was an old log cabin that served as a hospital. Uh, you can kind of see some of the remains here. and. Uh, there's a plaque that gives you some information about it during the time of the battle. Um, a lot of the folks, according to the plaque, that were here that died were buried in unmarked graves. This could kind of show just how easy it is to lose some historic sites to history. There's just a small sign on the side of the road that indicates that this is part of the location of the hospital, but you can see back behind me, uh, no one would know it was here without those signs. The first shots of the Battle of Mill Springs were fired in this area here. Uh, this is known as Timmy's Branch, and it was in this area where the Confederate and Union soldiers just happened to run into each other. And of course, it's now pretty much overgrown here beside the road, but uh, much of the landscape, other than just the vegetation and stuff, still remains the same. But it was right here that the first shots of the Battle of Mill Springs were fired. The reason why you want to make the Welcome Center your first stop is you can pick up a map that will give you an indication of each of the stops along this route over here in the Battle of Mill Springs and that's what we're doing now is we're literally just following this map to each of the stops. Uh, as you can see here, uh, of course seeing some nice countryside and uh, also they do have a lot of information on each of the stops as well. It's just some of the literature that they have available there at the Welcome Center. This area here is Molders Hill and in January of 1862 as the Union forces were pursuing the Confederate forces, this area here is where basically they had stopped to rest for the night. Uh, we are not far at all from the encampment of the Confederate Army, and that's gonna be our next stop in the tour of the Battle of Mill Springs. And this area in general, 
I think according to the plaque there was a, an old schoolhouse here of some type and of course it was used briefly by the Confederates uh, before they were driven back and then of course the Union forces rested in this area in preparations for the next day and the of course what they did not know is that the Confederate forces had by that time made it across the Cumberland River and began their uh, retreat. The Beach Grove encampment for Confederate forces. Uh, this area is where they had been fortifying prior to the Battle of Mill Springs. This was their fallback point after the battle was over and this is where they began their retreat across the Cumberland to basically try to escape the Union forces. Uh, there again this is about three quarters of a mile past where the Union Army had stopped previously in uh, that night of early January 1862 and there from that point uh, overnight the while the uh, Federal Army was basically waiting for the next day it was from this point that Confederates uh, began their escape across the Cumberland River uh, a little further down uh, but for now, we're going to go in here and check out what remains of this encampment. some 6,000 men that moved into this area in late December of 1861, uh, about a month prior to the Battle of Mill Springs. And during that time, you can kind of see some of the lay of the land. They built earthworks and things like that, basically to fortify this area. And uh, it is literally just on the side of the road, the main road through here. definitely see a lot of the way the dirt was done, the embankments, things like that as part of the fortification. This trail that I'm on now basically appears to lead around sort of the outside perimeter of those fortifications. Um, it's very wooded. Not sure exactly how it would have been in the 1860s, but I'm sure that 
it uh, according to the folks down at the welcome center a lot of the landscape except for the vegetation has not really changed but uh, very interesting area this was where they returned to after the battle uh, they had first came across the river prior to the battle they encamped here and then eventually when after the battle returned to this area uh, you know due to its fortification things like that prior to making their escape across the Cumberland River in this area where the Confederates had constructed small cabins and things like that as part of their fortifications and uh, in preparations leading up to the Battle of Mill Springs. There, as of yet, I have not seen any kind of remains of foundations or anything like that, but as long as it has been and as far as what they used for construction during that time period, there is certainly been a lot of changes that have happened to the landscape in this area since then. Can you imagine that in this area, in late 1861, early 1862, over 6,000 Confederate soldiers convened prior to the Battle of Mill Springs and then those that remained that came back through here. All happened right in this area. According to this plaque, there were over 500 of these log cabins that were constructed in this area. Of course, this is where they uh, had intended to winter prior to the battle. And there were basically a lot of, a lot of the stuff just left over. Once uh, the Confederates were retreating, they left a lot of just basically everything. You know, they just left everything as it was. According to the plaque, there was even a newspaper article in the Cincinnati Daily Newspaper that talked about it. You know, the various beds and just other provisions that were just left in this area during that time. They also have some photos of some of that, which some of these items, some of these artifacts, were present at the museum. You can see on this plaque, basically an outline of what this fortification looked like. We are on the opposite end of it from where we were earlier. Very easy to see the way the dirt works that remain, things like that that were done as part of the fortification. But all of that is right here. If I were to guess, I would think that the way that this ground is in a few places here, and it's probably not showing up on camera very well, but you can kind of see some depressions in the ground that more than likely, if I was to guess, I'd say that's where some of the cabins were constructed at. Uh, just the way that it is, it's just too square, I guess you could say. Uh, this section here 
is, I believe, one of them. But there again, guys, I've got nothing to base this off of other than just the fact that it's very obvious that the land here in this area has been uh, disturbed years ago, you know, well, well over 100 years ago now. Uh, but it's just very interesting to know that right in here, all along in this area, soldiers that were fighting during the Civil War were living, eating, working, and uh, just whatever else amongst what is now trees and basically an historic site. Someone has planted a tree in memorial here, part of the fort. Just happened to notice this as I was walking through. Very interesting. Just to show you some more, the lay of the land here, as well as some of these stones. This is just very unnatural. Right in this area here, it's just very unnatural. But I'm sure it's part of the work that they did all along in here. There's still several areas throughout here as well that you can tell that it's just the work that was done. Very unnatural, just like this whole area right in here is a depression. I know it's probably not coming through very well on camera. Another one here. And just all along in this area. Here is the site of Zollicker's headquarters. We can see the remains over here of the cabin. Just wanted to walk over here real quick to show this to you all. It's still the chimney is about the only thing that remains. But this served as the headquarters for a brief period. And just imagine the fires since the battle took place in winter certainly there were fires in that fireplace to warm the house and those in it but just one more piece of history that is disappearing you can see the only thing remaining of the cabin is the chimney some of the stones we are now at ferry landing this is the area at which the confederates escaped across the cumberland river we're going to walk down to the cumberland river and show you exactly where that happened as well this trail here that leads on down to the water. Of course there are a lot of boats in this area and once they crossed the river, once the Confederates crossed the river, they ended up burning a lot of the boats and things like that to ensure that they couldn't be used to pursue them.
It was from this area where they, the Confederate forces escaped across the Cumberland River and made their way away from the federal troops. Unfortunately, this is where we're gonna to have to conclude the video due to the time. We're not gonna be able to go to a couple of the other sites that are located on the other side, but this is just a uh, video that I wanted to do to show you guys some of the history of this area. There's a whole lot of history uh, regarding the Civil War in this area. You can see behind me, this is basically a playground for people now where they will just get out with their boats, and just enjoy the afternoon. That's kind of what part of this was for us, was just being able to get out and enjoy the day. And, uh, you know, but guys, I hope you liked the video. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos on my channel. This is one more of the videos that I wanted to do, just kind of showing some of the less well-known Civil War sites within Kentucky. Uh, we all know of the large battles of the Civil War that happened, but there were a lot of smaller ones that don't really get as much attention. And I wanted to record a little bit of that history. But guys, thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Check out the rest of the videos on my channel. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time.